How's it going, people? Well, <clears throat> the weather's pretty bad today, still. I mean, the whole weekend has kind of been pretty wet. I wanted to go out, but it's like I'm staying in. We are up to uh, chapter 10 of Mosiah, and there are nine drinks in that chapter. I wanted to try this out. So, we'll start the first drink off with that. Mmm, pretty! I've never tried this. I like a new experience from that time to time. Cheers. And to better weather. Very nice. And, oops. How's it going, folks? This is take two. <laughs> I got a little tongue tied, and then someone started knocking at my door. Guess who it was? Mormon missionaries. I just looked at them through the peephole. I didn't feel like talking with them. I do want to talk to them sometime. They're not going to like it, but uh, <laughs> I will. Just not now. I'm a little bit lit for my last attempt at doing this video. So I'm starting over on Mosiah, book 10. So you know it's going to be big. It's uh, more of a Zenus recollections on their gold tablets. Put on two Nephi's gold tablets, or one of those series of tablets. I, they sort of explain at the beginning. <coughs> but boring enough as it is. Anyway, there's, there are nine It Came to Passes that I spotted in my quick scan it, and I had some of this for the first shot, uh, but I'm not looking to get completely wasted, so I poured myself uh, some uh, Pete's Wicked Strawberry Blonde. There we have it. That is really good, though. Kind of like a Southern Comfort-y brandy. That uh, Christian Brothers honey. I think I'll stick with my Speeburn single malt. But cheers. I think it's coming to pass. And it came to pass that we again began to establish the kingdom and we again began to possess the land in peace. And I caused that there should be weapons of war made of every kind, uh, that thereby I might have weapons for my people against the time the Lamanites should come up again to war against my people. So he didn't give us a long catalog this time, he just said weapons of every kind. I guess he figured it out too. They're like, hey, you're running on gold, dickhead. Keep it brief. I mean, if you're paying, paying a nickel a word, you would. Stop! How many words can we take out? It'd be like text messaging now. Yeah. And I set guards round about the land that the Lamanites might not come upon us again unawares and destroy us. And thus I did guard my people and my flocks, same thing, and keep them from falling into the hands of our enemies. Mm. 
And it came to pass that we did inherit the land of our fathers for many years. Many. We forgot to count the years. They were so nice. <laughs> oh, yay for the space of 22 years. Then why did you say many years and throw me off? I'm not reading ahead. I'm trying to keep this fresh, folks. All right, so the footnote that I see here uh, claims that the date of the, this event is BC 178. So you gotta believe it. Because, you know, I mean, footnotes are pretty serious business. I mean, it's a scholarly work. <laughs> uh, and I did cause that the men should till the ground and raise all manner of grain and keep all manner of fruit of every kind. And I did cause that the women should spin and toil and work and work all manner of fine linen, yay, and cloth of every kind that we might uh, clothe our nakedness. And thus we did prosper in the land. Thus we did have continual peace in the land for the space of 22 years, which is many. And it came to pass that King Laman died, and his son began to reign in his stead. And he began to stir up his people, up in rebellion against my people. Therefore my, they began to prepare for war, and to come up to battle against my people. But I had sent spies out round about the land of Shemlon. Where is this, uh, um... Just wondering, folks, uh, where is it on this map? Oh, that's to cover the original uh, owner's name. Already a lie. But I had sent out spies out around about the land of Shemlon that I might discover their preparations, that I might guard against them, that they might not come upon my people and destroy them. And it came to pass that they came up upon the north of the land of Shiloh, with their numerous hosts, men armed with bows and with arrows. Because they'd be looking silly just pulling a bowstring with no arrow. <laughs> they'd be like banging two coconuts together and skipping instead of actually riding horses. That'd be funny. And with swords and with scimitars and with stones and with slings. And they had their heads shaved. That they were naked completely. Well, did they shave their pubes? You don't say. Some of them might have had to shave their backs. And fronts and sideways. And the nethers. Yeah. Uh, and, and they were girded with a leathern girdle about their loins, so they weren't completely naked. They're, they could have been fine in a Tarzan movie or something. And it came to pass that I caused that the women and children of my people should be hid in the wilderness. And I also caused that 
all my old men that could bear arms and also all my young men that were able to bear arms should gather themselves together to go to battle against the Lamanites. And I did place them in their ranks, every man according to his age. that we did go up to battle against the Lamanites. And I, even I, in my old age, did go up to battle against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that we did go up in strength of the Lord, in the strength of the Lord, to battle. <sighs> now the Lamanites knew nothing concerning the Lord, nor the strength of the Lord. Therefore, they depended upon their own strength. <laughs> Didn't they win in the end? Oh, I'm sorry. I just slipped the datum off. <sighs> Yet they were strong people as to the strength of men. Oh, shit! <laughs> they were wild and ferocious and a bloodthirsty people. <laughs> believing in the tradition of their fathers, which was this, believing that they were driven out of the land of Jerusalem, <coughs> because of the iniquities of their fathers, and that they were wronged in the wilderness by their brethren, and they were also wronged while crossing the sea. Well, we don't, we don't have their side of the story to read, do we? So we'll just take it. And again, that they were wronged while in the land of their first inheritance, after they had crossed the sea. And all this because that Nephi was more faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord. Therefore, he was favored of the Lord. For the Lord heard his prayers and answered them. And he took the lead of their journey in the wilderness, and his brethren were wroth with him, because they understood not the dealings of the Lord. They were also wroth with him upon the waters, because they hearkened, hardened their hearts against the Lord. And again, they were wroth with him when they had arrived in the promised land, because they said that he had taken the ruling of the people out of their hands. <laughs> and they sought to kill him. And again, they were wroth with him because he departed in the wilderness as the Lord had commanded him and took the records which were engraven on the plates of brass. Well, I mean, he's the one who killed Laban. He stole as much of his shit as he could, even to close up his back, the bloody ass clothes. And they said that he robbed them. Well, he might have. <laughs> I mean, he robbed Laban. Crick. I hate a thief. And thus, they had taught their children that they should hate them. Uh, and that they should murder them, and that they should rob and plunder them, and do all they could to destroy them. Therefore, 
they have an eternal hatred towards the children of Nephi. I wasn't too fond of the boy either. The original Nephi. For this very cause has King Laman, by his cunning and lying craftiness, and his fair promises deceived me that I have brought this people, uh, brought this my people up into this land that they may destroy them. Yea, we have suffered these many years in the land. So we discard that original statement about 22 years of uh, bliss. I guess many years have gone by and it's stuck and sunk. Don't forget the good times, which you mentioned earlier on. And now I, Zenith, after having told all these things unto my people concerning the Lamanites, I did stipulate, uh, stimulate them to go to battle with their might, putting their trust in the Lord. Therefore, did uh, we did contend with them face to face. And it came to pass that we did drive them out of our land. And we slew them with a great slaughter. Even so many that we did not number them. If this were the Bible, they'd have the numbers. Even if they had to pull them out of their ass, they would have had them. Uh, last drink, folks. And it came to pass that we returned again to our land, and my people again began to tend their flocks and to till the ground. And now I, being old, probably about BC 160, claims the uh, footnote, uh, did, uh, and now I, being old, <coughs> did confer the kingdom upon one of my sons. Therefore, I say no more. <coughs> there it is. Oh, I was waiting for that one. And may the Lord bless my people. Amen. And another one bites the dust. Peace the fuck out. This is some fucking fascinating shit. Well, have a, a wonderful whatever the fuck you're having, right?